So we have our nearly final speaker. I'm going to say Paul's our final speaker. Um, I want to welcome to the stage now Max Roth. He's head of business development for IOTA at Fran the Fraunhofer Institute for Integrated Circuits. And he's chair of the business development committee at the IOTA Alliance as well. Um, again, it's such an impressive profile. We really have had fantastic speakers um, today. Um, tell us about it in a nutshell. If we have time, we will do some questions. So please pop them in Slido in case we can. Yes, thank you, Sharon, uh, for the introduction. Um, my name is Maximilian Roth. Uh, good evening, uh, everyone. And today I will uh, present you a quite new low power wide area network technology, which is called MyoT. In this presentation, I will show you why we believe that this technology will have a huge impact on IoT. Before we take a deep dive, I'll give you a quick overview of uh, the inventor. MyoT was developed by the Fraunhofer Gesellschaft, which is the world's leading organization for applied research. And the people behind MyoT are from the Fraunhofer IIS. And this is the same research institute which brought you things like the audio codec MP3 or digital radio DAB+. Besides audio and multimedia technologies, we have a broad spectrum of research topics around IoT. We are manufacturing, uh, we are developing uh, smart sensors, localization and energy harvesting technologies, and um, communication systems. Um, here's a strong focus on 5G, 6G satellite IoT, but also on LPVAN. And I'm aware that a lot of experts are here in the audience, um, but for those who are not that deep into the topic, I'll give a short, a quick overview. Um, the advantage of LPVAN is that you can trans transmit small volumes of data over several kilometers, extremely battery efficient. And well-known technologies in this market are, for example, Sigfox, which was recently acquired by Unabis or LoRa, and um, cellular IoT technologies such as narrowband IoT or ATEM. And on the right side, you see a differentiation of these technologies by uh, open standards versus proprietary technologies and private versus public networks. And in addition, a new technology entered the market recently, which is called MyoT. And um, all of these technologies have its own advantages, but um, MyoT works fine or well uh, in scenarios where you need long range, um, ultra low power, and uh, lots of sensors. And uh, these are key features which are important for IoT in, and will become even more important. Um, well, we all expect that the market for IoT will grow um, significantly in the next years and uh, up to three billion of devices will be connected with um, LPVAN in the next four years. And these devices will be deployed in different verticals such as smart cities uh, with a focus on metering, um, logistics, smart cities, as said already, industrial IoT and buildings. Um, but when we uh, consider this market development, we will also face a huge challenge. And this challenge is that if you connect billions of devices um, in parallel, you will get a completely overcrowded radio spectrum and you will lose your messages and relevant information. And therefore, it's important to have technologies around who uh, can handle this massive amount of data. And ex exactly here we have seen um, limitations with existing technologies. And the reason for that is the system design. Um, today, the telegram is transmitted as a whole message. And, but if only a part of this message is interfered, you will, you will lose your complete uh, data. And this get wor gets worse the more devices you integrate in your network. And um, to overcome these limitations, Fraunhofer has developed a completely new kind of uh, wireless transmission technology, which is called telegram splitting. 
And um, the approach is here, that the telegram is divided into small sub-packets and then distributed via time and frequency. And even if you have interferers, uh, we don't lose the message. Uh, due to forward error correction, we, can, um, we only need 50% of the sub-packets sub -packets to reallocate, to reassemble the data in the base station. And the advantage is that you get a very good uh, long range, you get uh, very good reliability, scalability, and um, battery efficiency. And I will present you now these features in comparison with other technologies. Let's start with long range and scalability. On the left side, you see uh, network planning for OMS, for wireless MBUS. Uh, this is a well-known uh, metering technology, um, and um, you, you, you use it to send out the data of a seller, like from consumption meter, like uh, water, electricity, and gas, and uh, then send the data to the base station. And this yellow pin represents the space station, and barely visible around in green is uh, the coverage, which is, needless to say, very low. Um, you can increase it with uh, existing LPVAM, or you can even uh, achieve higher range um, in using MyOT. Now you are able to transmit 3.5 millions of messages per day um, per base station with less than 1% packet error rate. And we transmit this data very battery efficient. Um, this chart shows a comparison of the energy consumption of different, different LPVAN technologies. And uh, with MyOT, we only need th uh, 35 millijoule to transmit this data. Therefore, we call it ultra low power. And the advantage is that you need much less batteries, which makes it um, cheaper, but also more sustainable. The next relevant feature is reliability. And in this test, we um, installed sensors in a, in a cellar in three different locations, in a shopping center, in an old bunker, and in a church, and then transmitted these data every 10 minutes. And as you can see, we had a, um, a reliable data transmission. All the information uh, were received, was received by the base station. But as soon as you um, have to transmit data from more complex sensors, such as from a water meter, for example, which has approximately 200 bytes, um, then um, it gets more difficult. And in this test, we could prove that we um, transmitted all the data every 10 minutes, very reliable for 14 hours. But at the end, it's not all um, about technology features. Of course, um, one of the most important criteria when choosing your IoT technolo technology is uh, cost efficiency. And um, here you see a network planning um, where of more than 12, uh, of about 12 square kilometer. And here we deployed different sensors in a cellar, deep indoor, and then sent the data to the base stations. And here we needed 40 base stations to get a complete uh, coverage. We made the, th the same test with MyOT and could um, realize uh, the, the, the same uh, deep indoor penetration with 50% less of the space, base stations. And the advantage is that you get lower installation costs and lower maintenance costs, which will reduce your uh, overall total cost of ownership. I'll sum it up and start on the right side. Technology features, um, multi is long range, you can use it uh, it, it will send data between 5 to 15 kilometers. Uh, it's um, ultra low power. Up to 20 years battery lifetime is possible depending on how often you send the data. It has a very high reliability, quality of service, service and scalability. And you can use it for mobile um, uh, asset tracking, for example. Nodes operate at up to 100 kilometers per hour. On the left side, economic benefits. MyOT, um, you can use MyOT as a private network on-premises, therefore it's called, by the way, MyOT, My Internet of Things. 
or you can integrate it in existing networks, such as from LoRa or Sigfox. Um, it's highly cost efficient, efficient um, and it's, it's an um, Etsy standard, so it's uh, open for everyone without any vendor login. You can use it worldwide. We are using the ISM band here, license-free spectrum, 133 to um, 966 megahertz. And the last point is crucial. Um, it's future-proof. Uh, it's a, it's a software-based technology. You can integrate in any FSK transceiver. Um, it's completely hardware agnostic. Well, I have introduced you now to only the connectivity solution to, the, to, a, to a protocol called MyOT, but um, to generate really a, a benefit for the end customer, you need a little bit more. You need um, sensors, you need base stations, you need a complete backend, and um, you need a whole ecosystem. And therefore, we founded the MyOT Alliance um, in 2020. Um, we started with eight companies and have now um, have grown now to 40 members. Um, there are, it consists of, of uh, chipset manufacturers like Scilabs, for example, ST Microelectronics. Um, it ha we have um, vendor manufacturers, um, sensor manufacturers like, for example, Weica or IFM, um, with a strong focus on industrial IoT, metering companies, but also companies which uh, have, uh, are providers from network and, and uh, application management, such as Laureate, to name a few. And we are very open for other technologies. Um, in the alliance, there are, there are also uh, different members from the LoRa alliance or from Sigfox, for example. And all these members um, have different target markets, which you see on the bottom uh, left. And uh, the main markets are industrial IoT. We have uh, installations in uh, automotive at BMW in Mexico, in Munich, for example, in chemical, mining, and steel, but also in buildings and in smart cities. And uh, there, especially in smart metering, we see a huge potential market um, in smart metering. Uh, there, the number of projects have increased during the last two years, which you can see here on the left in Germany and in Austria. Um, these are not only POCs, but we have also first commercial rollouts there since June 2022. And uh, the majority of this project is from uh, demetering, which you can see on the bottom right. The target customers are municipalities in the field of metering, but also airports, for example, the Airport Munich, and they have the challenge that they have to connect thousands of, of sensors in uh, a network and uh, have uh, different manufacturers, and it's, they are distributed in an area of more than 15 square kilometer. And um, it's really a harsh environment. You have a lot of steel, you have uh, thick walls, uh, concrete, and it's a huge effort for them to get out the data um, of the seller. Well, we deployed a MyOT network there, uh, retrofitted the sensors, and sent the data out wirelessly. But the interesting point here is that we only needed three base stations to get a complete coverage indoor. We have use cases there like remote water metering, but also asset tracking uh, and energy monitoring. And we will test also new features. We are planning currently a new standard, MyOT 2.0, with um, uh, higher data rates with multicast and broadcast features um, to control um, a group of devices or also um, control uh, actors, for example, like, um, uh, like closer wealth in case of a water leakage. Well, um, now you have heard about um, different scenarios where MyOT works very well. But, uh, of course, we cannot um, um, scale any IoT uh, application or are suitable for that. Um, there is not this one-size-fits-all technology. Uh, therefore, we promote the approach to combine different technologies in one installation, in one network, um, with, different, uh, with all their advantages. And we call this approach 
uh, hybrid networks. And believe it or not, we, will, we are um, setting up such a hybrid network here in uh, Glasgow, in Scotland, and we will combine MyoT and LoRaWAN. And um, we are planning this project together with Census and uh, members of the MyoT Alliance, which are uh, listed here. And we will first, in the first phase, set up um, um, uh, a network and then add MyoT base stations to the existing LoRaWAN gateways then identify and prioritize the use cases, and then deploy the first sensors. And I'm delighted to invite all of you to be part of that. Um, and if you're interested, please contact uh, Kevin Power or Cian Williams later. We will be there at the booth. And uh, with, this, with, with this announcement, um, I've reached the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. I was about, oh, phew, my questions disappeared. So we're not going to let you go just yet. We do have a couple of questions yeah. for you. Um, you've answered the first one, which was the most popular. When is Myoti coming to Scotland? So that's the call for everyone. Get involved. Yeah. Um, the second one I have in the list here, which country had the largest Myoti network just now? Which country has the most potential to embrace it? Um, we have the first, the, the biggest network now in Germany uh, with Myoti. Uh, there we see a huge market, but uh, also in Middle East, for example, or in the US. Super, thank you. And the very last question, how big is the IT development team, apart from the many employees that might be in the organization? So at um, Fraunhofer, we have around uh, 20 to 30 employees who are working solely on the MyOT technology, and uh, then around 40 people, as I said, in the Alliance. Super. Great. Those were the questions. Thanks. We'll let you go now. Thank you ever so much. Really interesting. Love to see the development. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.